Welcome to Healthcare's Missing Link, a weekly podcast to help you uncover hidden things that steal your health. Thanks for joining us today. Here's your host, Dr. Mark Sherwood. My honor again to welcome my friend, uh, Dr. David Hawsey. We're going to talk. He's a repeat guy. It's awesome. So we're going to talk about really getting into a dreadful uh, disease process called Alzheimer's. Uh, David, man, thank you again for joining me. I really appreciate it. I'm pumped about this. Ooh, it's great to be back. Hey, so let's got, get right into it. Um, you know, Alzheimer's, they talk about it. What's the cause? What, what, are the, what is the etiology of this? Yeah. Oh, Alzheimer's. I mean, yeah, just even saying the word, doesn't yeah. it? You know, people hate hearing that word. And yeah, honestly, if people have already gotten past this far in the podcast without going, oh my God, I don't want to hear about that. I give them all <laughs> kinds of credit. No, I really do because yeah. it is, it triggers us at every level. Any of us who's had any interplay, we're all afraid we've had any exposure to it. We're worried about, hey, could I be going there? You yeah. know, you know, I don't want to go there. How do I not go there? I might have family members. Could that be happening to my wife, my parents? And, and so I just think, Alzheimer's, you know, I would actually say the number one problem with Alzheimer's is denial. Denial mm-hmm. that it is actually there. And when you talk mm-hmm. about the number one cause of degeneration, it's denial of a problem. Wow. Yeah. That's and, good. Yeah, I mean, because we really yeah. have to, it takes a lot of bravery. We've been told for so many years that there's nothing you can do about Alzheimer's disease. And, and that's frankly not the case. It is absolutely not the case. And, um, but it comes out of a misunderstanding of what Alzheimer's is. And so, uh, but you know, if you've, if you've kind of spent your life saying the world is one way, yeah, right. And now somebody comes and tells you the world isn't that way. You have to, it's hard, right? You actually resent, you almost don't like that person that says very uncomfortable, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. And also, if, if you happen to start having memory changes, uh, many people want to deny that it's actually going on. And that's because they're going like, well, I've been told there's nothing I can do about it. Therefore, I don't want anybody to know about it. And I also don't want to even acknowledge it myself. So I'm just going to live the best life I can with all this going on. So, uh, I mean, I just, I just can't see this enough. We, we have to be brave enough to see the new data and the new opportunities to uh, that can can actually effectively treat this multi system failure. Now, so. when you start talking about this 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 uh, denial, I, I guess it's probably based a lot in fear fear of like losing your mind and losing your faculties. Um, and you're saying that there's something we can do about this, yep. right? You're saying we're not just stuck with this loss of function. This is going to happen. Can't do anything about it. So there's people out there now that, okay, I've got family members that's there right now. What am I going to do? Talk to them. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, there's, there's two, gosh, you know, uh, on our last podcast, we talked a lot about how we're uti- utilizing therapeutic plasma exchange as a treatment right. for Alzheimer's disease. And, and that is essentially a process where we remove the old plasma and replace it with clean plasma replacement and in large study, uh, multinational, multi-center, randomized, placebo-controlled trial, this was shown to actually uh, slow the progression of moderate Alzheimer's by 60% over 14 months and to reverse uh, mild Alzheimer's over those same 14 months. So, so it actually had improvement rather than a decline over 14 months. That's amazing. Yes. And so, what we don't have yet studies is on, you know, what happens if it, you're dealing with this sooner. Um, but we know that this plasma exchange can turn on multicellular regeneration. Um, and, and we have seen in the clinic, people really perk up substantially uh, when they're very early in this process, even people just wanting to be healthier. So what I'm trying to say, I'm trying to go to the extreme, first of all, that this yeah. idea that you can remove this old plasma and that changes the behavior of the stem cells that exist in the entire rest of the body. Mm-hmm. And I think it's so important to start there, to start that understanding. Because if, if you're going like, wow, that really worked. So why did that work? And, and I think then, then it goes to the, the, 
this. So the question that helps us understand, it's like, well, why did it work? Well, it means there must be something detrimental in the plasma. Mm-hmm. There must be something that is inhibitory to the healing process in the plasma. There must be something that is damaging in the plasma, or maybe there's something beneficial in this clean uh, plasma replacement fluid that we've, we've helped develop or mm-hmm. in the augmenting strategies of what gets put in. So we're either removing something bad mm-hmm. or adding in something good. And or, the both. Body, <laughs> or both. Or both. Actually, we are absolutely doing both. And the body, who re- that the body really understands how to create health. I mean, that's what our body does. And, you know, you and I have been in this field a long time. Gosh, I'm kind of 25 years in this integrative, <laughs> holistic, functional medicine world. And, 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 and it just astounds me again and again what people can recover from. And, and so if you think this plasma exchange removes the old plasma, puts in this clean replacement fluid, we see improvement in neurodegenerative disease. That means it's removing something bad, adding something good. Well, now let's pull back and say, well, what are the things that are bad? that are inhibiting the body? And then what are the things that are good that the body is missing? And how about we start working on those things as well so that we don't have to go to this larger procedure-based intervention. And, 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 um, and that is really what we call a systems medicine approach towards mm-hmm. Alzheimer's disease. So it's a lot of little things. Um, you know, and that's because what Alzheimer's is, it's really a, a final common systems failure. A whole, mm-hmm. Often a whole bunch of independent systems, a hormonal system, an inflammatory system, a structural system, mm-hmm. a, a misfolded protein management system, they start to degenerate one after the other. And pretty soon enough systems have failed that the entire the entire brain starts to unbrain, literally degenerate. Mm, yeah, yeah, it's good. And so, so anyway, I, I think plasma is a great, un, helps us understand what mm-hmm. power there is in our lifestyle, what power there is in our daily behaviors. Because if we can bring in more good things and remove more bad things, um, mm-hmm. and we do that specific to who we are, Okay, and this is where we fall down all the time. There are some great yeah. general things to do. Everybody does better with more exercise. Everybody does better with less stress. Everybody does better with whole, more whole food. Mm-hmm. So let me say there's some foundation, but then it's the particulars. What is what are the particular degenerative systems that are activating uh, in that individual? Mm-hmm. And I think that's really our next step: is how do we most um, comprehensively and efficiently interrogate the entirety of that person's physiology and then create an intervention plan to slow the process of degeneration for that individual. We've been, we've been building software platforms to do that, to help make that process easier uh, and more accessible. But um, anyway, it's, it's, it's just awesome. D- dementia is absolutely something that is addressable uh, mm-hmm. and, and Yeah. It's, 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 I can't, I, there's no way if you would have told me 10 years ago, I would be geeked out at every memory loss patient that walks in my door. Uh, you, I would have told you, 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 you're crazy. You just said, I've lost my mind. I've lost my mind. Because well, <laughs> you, you have, um, personally been experienced by, uh, had experience with Alzheimer's with a friend. I know that, um, you know, talk about that. And, and did that spur you on to kind of go into this area? Was that, was that some of what kind of opened the door, if you will? Yeah. You know, that was, I was already down this path quite a long time before then. Um, you know, what really got me down this path is Proverbs. So in, in Proverbs, uh, in the Bible, it is really, I, I, I read, Proverbs has 31 chapters, so it's great right. for a monthly read, right? Yeah, one, one a day, right. One a day, one a day. And I did that for a year when I was in high school, one year, and just read, read through a chapter of Proverbs uh, a day. And it had a big effect on me as I looked through the retrospectoscope of my life, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and the seeking after wisdom is a very big theme in Proverbs. You know, seek after wisdom, young man. Seek after wisdom. And, and... I was 
taking care of these older patients in my practice. And I just love, I just love people that have more birthdays than I do. Right. I I think, I think it's amazing. Right. And, and these people have such wisdom because that's really, you know, you get wisdom from your accumulated mistakes. (laughs) And the point well said, right. And the more years you have, the more mistakes that you get to develop and learn from. So the people who continually learn long-term, man, you know, they can, they can just understand the world in a way that is really elegant and helpful. Mm. And, and so I started recognizing that you know, dementia is dementia is not just horrible in that you lose yourself or you lose your loved one's identity, but the world also loses the wisdom of that person. Mm, it's good. And, and that is, and, and, you know, that's tragic because though we need wisdom, you know, the, the more complex and fast moving our world becomes, the more, we really need to be depending upon the wisdom of elders to help ground us in, in what is a very fast moving, you know, the extremes are always important. Yes. We need fast moving, uh, big data early, you know, people who are pushing the boundaries and we also need grounding so that we don't kind of fly off. Uh, fly off. <laughs> so that's, Honestly, the, the, the search for the uh, expansion and preservation of wisdom is really what gave me the nudge to say, you know, I need to be investing more of my efforts in this domain. So, yeah. And then, uh, and then, yeah, one of my, my, my best friend in college, my college roommate, guy I lived with for four years, calls me up one day and says, David, I, I'm losing my memory. I can't, I just can't think straight. And, uh, and you can, I did a Ted talk about this and you can uh, search my name and plasma and dementia. You can see the story of Dan and, uh, it turns out actually Dan has frontotemporal dementia, not Alzheimer's dementia. It was very, it's a very you know, different form in that, um, it, it occurs at about the same rate in every age group uh, past the age of 40. So wow. they have some very young, uh, participants and, and it also has some similarities to ALS. Uh, kind of, so there are some, it's a fascinating, but, um, you know, we've, we've, but we did our comprehensive kind of systems medicine approach with Dan intervened and, and he had an amazing improvement. He, he actually was able to go back to full-time work for a time. And then, um, you know, both because of either the disease or kind of falling off the wagon with our recommendations, <laughs> you know, things got worse again. And, um, but it's, it's profound to start to, you know, to continue. I wish that he was closer by that we could do plasma exchange on a regular basis. We would certainly do that. Um, I mean, we have another patient of ours with frontal temporal dementia that has lost her ability to speak, uh, has really not, not, you know, she's, she's in her forties as well. And, um, you know, doesn't follow really recognize commands and, um, kind of a shell of a person and her parents really, wanted us to proceed with trying plasma exchange. And we did um, two, uh, the first exchange, we couldn't even really get IV access. And so we tried again another day and we just exchanged like 900 cc's and her mom came back and she said, you'll never believe it. Uh, she said her first word in, no way. In, in a year and a half. Yeah. In a year and a half. Ooh, Not only that, bills, man, that's cool. I know, but and 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 but not only that, she she figured out the locks on the back uh, in the in the oh. backyard, and so she escaped from the enclosure that she's usually in, uh, which they were amazed. Uh, you know, she's never actually tried to get out and never figured out the locks before, uh-huh. and she's now much more active. She's engaging in her environment. Um, I mean, it's it's we're in brand new territory. We're in brand she's new territory, now, right? She's What's speaking. That? She's speaking now, the girl? Oh, no, 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 no. I'm just saying she got one word out, and that was, we're only a couple of sessions in. Okay, okay. And and so, and I don't know, you know, that this is why we have to pay attention to small changes in memory. If you have subjective memory loss, meaning if you think you're not thinking as sharply as you used to, um, you're right. (laughs) You're right. You are your best gold standard. Now, it may not be bad enough that a medical test can pick it up. So you come to your doctor and you do a little neurocognitive test and say, oh, you're perfect. If you know something's wrong, 
something is wrong. And, yeah. and so um, that's what I want to emphasize to people. So the earlier that we intervene in these things, I am confident that the bigger effect we can have on, on, on slowing, stopping, and even re- reversing the cause of multiple neurodegenerative diseases. Mm-hmm. Um, the body is designed to heal. It really is. Yeah. Uh, but it, it may take really big efforts from a lifestyle, lifestyle, medication, IVs, apheresis, mm-hmm. transcranial stimulation. I mean, there's, we, don't ha- we don't have a magic, we don't have a magic formula. Every person needs to be treated as an individual. Uh, plans need to be made according to the things that are going to best potentially help that person. And, and, I, and I tell the other physicians that work here at Maxwell Clinic, I mean, you know, our, our job is to wisely guide people to use their limited resources of time, money, energy, and effort uh, so that they can have potentially the best outcomes uh, for the investment mm-hmm. of those resources. And I think if we continue to take that view of healthcare, that, you know, it it is our number one asset. uh, And, you know, we really need to need to care for ourselves. The insurance companies are not going to do it. You know, it's not their business. They're it's just not their business. And uh, instead we need to rationally and compassionately and comprehensively address as many underlying causes of illness as possible simultaneously Right. This, is, this is not a time to kind of do onesie twosie things at a time. It is, you're losing your memory. It's a, I think it's a five alarm bell. Now you mentioned a couple of things, like you would remove the plasma and you, you, you wash it. I think we've talked about this before. You talked about the, the, the good things you're putting back in, the bad things you're removing. Have you figured out uh, some of those bad things you're removing and then some of the good things you're putting in? And if so, what are those? Yeah. Oh gosh, a lot. So let's just talk about albumin, for instance. So albumin is a protein that hangs out in the liquid part of your blood, what we call the plasma. And so if, you, if you've ever kind of seen, um, well, sometimes when people skin their legs, you see kind of this little yellowish, yellowish uh, thick, sticky liquid kind of ooze out of a scab yeah. or something, right? And that's, that's your plasma. It's kind of coming out. Plasma is thicker than water. And this albumin is a major protein. It's a major thing that kind of holds, you know, holds on to the water and keeps the water in your blood vessels so it doesn't escape out amongst all your cells. But albumin has all kinds of functions. I mean, it's a sponge. Um, it is a sponge in that it holds on to toxins. It holds on to uh, amyloid beta, you know, mm-hmm. so one of the, the, you know, the count- biggie count- right there, yeah. Uh, that aggregates into beta amyloid sheets and, you know, participates in the progression of Alzheimer's. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, what else? Uh, free, uh, free fatty acids stick to the outside of albumin. Hormones stick to the outside of albumin. A whole bunch of minerals, um, but, but a lot of toxins. The other thing that albumin does is it is your m- number one intravascular antioxidant. So we talk all the time about eating antioxidants and like, oh, let's have some, you know, resveratrol or some polyphenols or all kinds of things that kind of absorb or will soak up, you know, a free radical uh, in our diet. And those are super important. But if that free radical gets inside your blood vessel, albumin is what's going to soak it up. Mm -hmm. So the longer and older you get or the more inflammation you have or the more incompletely burned oxygen you have, or what we call oxidative stress, uh, the more you have of that, the more damage there is to the albumin. And, that, and now that albumin can't do its job as well. And so you've got basically a sponge that's soaked with a whole bunch of dirt. And, and uh-huh. that's what ends up happening. So that's one of the things that gets removed. The albumin, the albumin we put back in is literally clean. There's nothing attached to it. Uh, so it, it goes into the bloodstream and it starts soaking up uh, compounds that are in the walls of the, the glycocalyx inside the mm-hmm. wall of the capillary and it starts soaking up. Uh, we have so much to learn here and we're doing a bunch of advanced analysis. Uh, and you know how much I love data, but 
I, this is entirely, this is such a beautiful new field. So well, some of the other things that you remove, well, you remove senescence factors. So when, when you have a stem cell that feels like it is in a dysfunctional environment, um, uh, it's going to start oozing out messages to the cells around it to say, hey, kind of go into hibernation right now. You know, let's not actively heal, but let's also not grow so fast we become a cancer. You know, let's let's just let's just kind of fester. <laughs> That's the way I think of senescent <laughs> cells. They're kind of just sitting there festering, kind of urging a little bit of inflammation and urging all the other cells around them to kind of be uh, cranky. Uh, <laughs> I love it. Yeah, you know, we we all know those people in our lives, right? Yeah. They're like a senescent cell. And, nice. and and if you could remove their messaging, it's like, you know, remove them from Facebook. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a good analogy right there. Yeah. <laughs> and so the uh and and that's what you do. If you remove these senescent signaling cells, and you clean up the environment, it turns out the stem cells start behaving younger. They start sending messages out of, hey, it's time to repair and heal. Hey, it's time to have, um, you know, to build towards resilience. Um, you know, and there are toxins that are removed. I mean, this plasma exchange is literally the most potent detox that anyone could have because mm -hmm. instead of depending upon your liver or your kidneys or your sweat to remove little tiny amounts, uh, right. we pull it out by the leader. <laughs> and cool. I know it's, it's just, it just blows my mind. I mean, it's yeah. it really pretty amazing. There's a recent study came out that suggested that um, a fecal microbiome transplants may be helpful in Alzheimer's disease. And in there, because of these bacteria in the gut, you know, kind of ooze out a whole bunch of molecules that inform the body of, uh, you know, of what it should be doing. It's mm -hmm. signaling a, a set of signaling molecules. Well, guess what? We're having a massive difference on that set of signaling molecules by pulling out the plasma. So, you know, uh, absolutely, we need to work on the gut 100%. But if we can hit a reset button, to our body's ability to heal in this way. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a lot of potential. There's a scripture in the Bible that talks about the passage where the life is in the blood. So this gives this whole new meaning to what we're talking about. So even with these senescent cells, it sounds like to me that the albumin is, if it's healthy, it's going to soak those up too, right? Is that kind of how that works? I don't know if I'd say it quite that way. Uh, the senescent cells are kind of resident inside the tissue. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, so if they've accumulated some more damage and things like that, and then those senescent cells ooze out exosomes, yes. packets of cellular information that are not really beneficial towards regeneration. Mm -hmm. They're not, not, not beneficial towards aging. Um, you know, in aging, I just describe it as, you know, a period of time in which you've had more degeneration than regeneration. That's aging. And so if you can have a period of time where you have more regeneration than degeneration, you've now anti-aged. Uh, and I think that's that we want to have more periods like that. And so the most of the senescent cells say what stay where they are. I think we're just we're maybe just cleaning out what they're the messages they're sending and hopefully yeah. also changing their status from being a senescent cell to being a, an active participatory healing cell in the body. Instead of being quite so cranky, they become more encouraging. Maybe. Exactly. That's right. That's right. So how long does the, does it take one to do the total plasmic change? They come to the office. How long going to be there? How, how long does that work? Yeah, so, um, well, we always do an evaluation to make sure that this is appropriate. Usually mm -hmm. starts with a phone call to say, all right, well, what is your interest? What do you think this may be helpful for you? Uh, and then we have a visit here in the office just to make sure you're safe. There's some basic labs that need to be done. But because this is a safe procedure, um, um, it's very complex to do. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, it, it, the way we do it has a high degree of safety. Um, it is. Um, it doesn't need a lot of investigation for the exchange itself. 
Now, for dealing with all of the factors that led to the fact you could benefit from an exchange, that's a much larger evaluation. But there are really two separate things, and we're really focusing on the the plasma exchange itself. And and you come in um, and uh, sit in a nice comfy chair, uh, an IV is placed in both arms, and blood comes out one arm. Um, It gets mixed with an anticoagulant. So that the, um, and then that blood and anticoagulant mixture goes through and continuously running centrifuge that pulls apart. So these heavy cells go to one side and the light plasma goes to the other side. Mm -hmm. And then the plasma goes into one bag that is eventually discarded and the cells go down another path and they are mixed with this clean replacement fluid. Mm -hmm. And that's a, a mixture of, uh, kind of everything that you need. Uh, right. and we do testing beforehand and we have some patents and um, uh, ways of doing that that assure uh, we're really always trying to over, over determine safety mm-hmm. and um, also make it as potentially effective process as possible. And then those, that substance, that new mixture of red cells and uh, optimized replacement fluids goes back into the body. It's the same consistency of the blood that came out, but now just with clean materials. And then that process continues to run, you know, a big guy like you, Mark, you know, it may, it may take, you know, three and a half hours for, for yeah. you. you just, you just got more plasma there to work with. And our yeah. machine is only so big. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Love that. But, 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 but we, you know, but someone with uh, good big veins and a smaller body uh, can get this process and we can actually remove anywhere from one to one and a half times their plasma volume in sometimes under an hour and a half. Wow. Uh, that's unusual. That's unusual. Um, so, so we give people a range and, and based upon their, their size and their, um, and also, you know, the more red blood cells you have, you know, the less plasma you have for us to remove. So, mm-hmm. I mean, when people, when, especially guys that take testosterone, often mm-hmm. their red blood cell counts are high. Mm-hmm. We very strongly encourage them to donate blood uh, mm-hmm. before we do a plasma exchange because it's just going to be much more efficient. I, I encourage men to donate blood all the time anyway because it's a huge, you know, huge side benefits to one's own health and you're really, you know, truly giving the gift of life. So there you go. Yeah. I, I love that. So, you know, you and I have had this conversation, uh, the, the pre-conversation, and I think it's safe to say, I mean, listeners can understand. I mean, my wife and I are actually planning to come over there and do this. So obviously, you know, we'll be uh, able to give a testimonial and we will do so about what it means to our life. So along those lines, you know, you're talking about, you know, this this correction, reversal uh, of this degeneration of the brain. What about somebody who doesn't have that stuff going on? Is that is that a viable thing to do for them, this kind of total plasma exchange? Yeah, and, and that's what's so interesting. So our basic science uh, revolves around mouse models and a lot of mouse models. And a recent study published in the journal Aging, uh, an amazing study. Oh, my gosh. They did such a great job. Uh, they measured so many very important variables. They took uh, old mice. Mm-hmm. And they did exactly what we are doing here in the clinic setting. They removed some of those that mouse's old plasma and instead just in, infused a clean replacement fluid, this albumin and an albumin-like mixture. Mm-hmm. And, and they were able to show multi-tissue regeneration from this. Whoa. Whoa. Body, body-wide stem cell activation. So new neurogenesis occurred. Um, a reversal of fatty liver disease in these old mm-hmm. mice. And, uh, and improvement in muscle mass and exercise and injury recovery uh, to muscles. Uh, if they would have looked at osteoporosis, they in other studies we've seen bone regeneration, skin regeneration, improvement in in kidney function, and and he, but here's the thing: I mean, literally, you get body wide improvement. Now, uh, like in your case, like one of our patients today, uh, <laughs> we, we were laughing. I said, he said, um, he said, I don't. I, he said, so I shouldn't expect to feel much better because because you know it's 
and, you know, how, how, how would a, how would a Mercedes ever know that it got, just got a tune up? <laughs> <laughs> good, good, good question. Yeah. <laughs> And I thought, oh, my God, that was so good. And, and so the healthier people are, uh, you know, no, you, you, the symptom improvement is not what we're shooting for. We are truly shooting for improved cellular health, for improved re- body-wide regeneration. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're tracking a bunch of cellular markers. Um, mm-hmm. we, we do transcriptomics and large-scale methylation studies. And uh, we're trying to do a lot of things to figure out the why behind this. Because yeah. another question is like, well, yeah, so here I am, you know, 50 plus years old, and I can see the fact that I'm having more degeneration than regeneration. You know, when is this really going to be indicated in this anti-aging strategy? And, and um, so we've been collecting a lot of data, and we have better answers for that. But then the hard question is like, well, how often do I need to do this again? Right. Well, the aging study was remarkable because it had all these changes occurred in the mouse with one exchange. It was one exchange. So, so I, the, what, this has really changed my mindset on this, that this may not be something that you need to come in and be doing like the Alzheimer study. They did once a week for six weeks, and right. then a month thereafter. That's, that's a lot. And, uh, but in this way, maybe once a quarter, you know, so we'll be, we'll be tracking, we're going to be tracking outcomes and data. Uh, I think we're going to be probably saying that once a quarter will be optimal once every six months, I think there'll be benefit to once a year. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, but again, it's a matter of, you know, higher dose is going to likely give you a better effect. Well, it just makes sense. It seems like a common sensical approach. You know, you're, you're cleaning something that gets, that gets totally dirty and gunked up right? and, and you're, you're fixing and replacing it. I mean, this is the beauty of science and technology and, and vision. You have vision, sir, and I love that. So yeah. what do you see from a vision standpoint? Now, this, this is I'm going to get into your dream world here, your wish world, your want world. Um, what do you see happening with this in the next 10 years? Well, number one, we're going to break through the primary cause of brain degeneration, and that is denial. Okay. We're going we're to start breaking through that. That is actually our number one. People need to be okay with believing something can be done. Mm. And they need, because the, the doctors don't want to believe it. The patients don't want to believe it. Family doesn't want to believe it. You don't want to hope for it. Now, you absolutely want it. But it, this idea that, hey, I've said forever in my lifetime, there's nothing you can do. And now to change that belief whole bunch of people around you are going to be like, well, what are you doing? Why are you doing that? You know, what, well, why are you, why, are you, you know, oh, I feel so bad for you. You're, you're just, you're just, you're just grasping at straws. And I want to smack those people upside the head because yeah, sure. the, you know, being a force of, of, of disease. And that's really what it is. The so people who live in denial and are spreading denial that humans are, have the capacity to heal they're toxins in themselves. And, but guess what? They can be detoxed. <laughs> yes, sir. And so the whole goal is to educate around, you know, how can we, how can we recognize that our bodies have remarkable capacity to heal? And that remarkable capacity to heal is open to all of us. And, and it doesn't have to be something so drastic like plasma exchange. Start where you are. But you have to dig into your lifestyle, clean up your diet, uh, all that matters. So, you know, where do I hope we are? Um, uh, I mean, we're, we're focusing on actually building healing centers. You know, I think we need to be uh, engaged in the, really the, the healing of the whole person. Um, you know, and if we don't ask the questions of, you know, what are you here for? You know, what, you know, what is, what is your meaning? What is your purpose? And I will tell you that the people who come for plasma exchange are the ones who know why they're here. They, they go like, you know what? I am here. I want to have a major part in my grandchild's life. I know, I mean, I have, you know, I know that my health and performance is what is my limiter and my ability to contribute in the world. You know, uh, the people who have the, um, the mindset being contributors rather than uh, rather than takers. Those right. are the people who continue to show up. And like I say, we have the you know you and I have the best 
patients in the world. I mean, the best people in the world are drawn towards wanting to take charge of their health and, and be, be part of the solution, not just for themselves, but for their family and the world around them. Mm. I mean, I, 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 I and, and I know, no, I'm never retiring. I love doing what I do. This is the best, this is the best job in the world to get to see people become a, become a better version of themselves. Mm. And, and, uh, and I think that as we do this, we're going to start healing as communities. So, you know, one person cleans up their diet, two people clean up their diet. Now five people clean up their diet, 50, 500. There's a cascading effect where we can restructure the availability of health creating structures. Um, and uh, yeah, and I believe plasma exchange is going to be a massive part of this. I really, I mean, yeah, I, I am so blown away by the power of this particular therapy more than I have in, in many of the therapies that I've helped pioneer over these last 25 years. And I think that this is going to be a, um, I'm going on record to say this is going to be uh, a foundation for anybody who is taking anti-aging seriously. I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. And every time I think you know, I've told you this, but I'll say this to affirm, you are a pioneer of hope. And hope is something that we all need to get a hold of. I hope and pray that people that listen to this podcast will become hope dealers like you're a hope dealer. I think that's significant. Um, you know, and the next time we do this, we will, if, with your permission, of course, we'll talk about our case. Well, we're doing, I think. That'd be awesome. Day. That'd be awesome. We can even um, do it live. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, do you, um, you have a problem with put your, your TED Talk link below this feed so people can get that because I want people to get this and connect. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And if they want more information, our clinic is maxwellclinic.com. Uh, and there's more information there about plasma exchange and things like that. And, uh, but yeah, but uh, uh, please, please do. It's yeah. a, and I also, I also cover some of this in a book I wrote called Curiosity Heals the Human. That's right. sitting right there in front of me right now. I'm looking right at it. It's awesome. It, it is. It, it's so funny. I just really never promote the book. I never talk about it. And, and the number of just remarkable people who have just picked it up and um, I didn't realize it was going to have as much of an effect as it has. And so I need to do a better job of telling people I wrote it. So <laughs> well, I'm going to help you with that because this book, I've recommended it numerous times. It is written in a way that, that the, the lay person can understand and the non-lay person can be motivated by it. it you just did a really remarkable job of putting it together in a well uh, written, easy to read format. And it, it gives people hope. It's the same theme. I mean, people are getting the same voice right now and they're going to hear this voice again coming through those pages. So um, I'm going to put the link to that in the uh, Amazon, right? You know, Amazon, is that where they get it? Right. Correct. Yep. That's right. We'll put the link right below the feed and we'll put also the link to the Ted talk below the feed. And I, I, I want people to catch uh, the, the wind that you're, you're blowing on people right now. I love this and healing clinics around the world. Yeah. Great. Well, it's, it's, it has to happen. It has to. And, uh, and I, yeah. I'm grateful um, that and you're a friend of mine. You're, you're, you're one of those healing clinics. I mean, that's, I mean, it's, it's, yeah. uh, it, it, and the great thing is uh, so many people, physicians are waking up all across the world. Uh, we're taking back medicine. We're taking back medicine mm. from the insurance companies, from the regulatory yeah. agencies, from the people that didn't take a damn oath. So if you haven't taken an oath to, you know, to preserve and protect humanity and to uh, place yourself into a sacred space with, with uh, patients, then get out of the damn way. Because those of us who have taken an oath, uh, you know, we we're here to to follow through on that oath, and um, and it's it's time to retake medicine. Well said. You know, there's an old saying that I, I quoted many times that the body has more ability to heal than medicine has ever told you, and I think that just is the epitome of what you just said. Yeah, you got to get this back and. Um, Dr. David Hazy, I'm grateful you're a friend of mine. Oh, I'm grateful you're a friend of mine, Mark. I, I, um, I sure would. I appreciate ever, all the contributions you make in the world. 
Well, we're, we're in this together, man. Uh, it's uh, like-minded and I uh, love you and appreciate you very much. And uh, looking forward to everybody connecting with you. I'm looking forward to seeing you in person. By the time this thing airs, I'll probably have already been there and back. So it's like, oh. great. So uh, next time we'll talk about that case. You good with that? I like it. We'll do that. Same bat channel, same bat time. You betcha, man. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this this has been an amazing uh, podcast. I, I want you to listen to this a couple times. Remember, uh, always pay attention and subscribe to what's below, what's coming next. And if this didn't motivate you, your motivating button is broken. I got to tell you. So there is hope out there. There's hope out there for you that are struggling with neurodegenerative disease processes. And even the thought and the fear of it, get out of that way and begin to believe again. Eliminate doubt right now. Let doubt go away and let faith come in. And I think that's the word for the day. And so I hope that this broadcast has encouraged you. And I look forward to seeing you once again on the next episode of Healthcare's Missing Link. Bye for now.